Hi, this is KV, and this is the Moon Phase Report for Leo. Okay, so yours, um, there's really big shifts going on with your value system right now, and um, things that you didn't see as valuable before, you're really kind of awakening to how valuable they really were. And this can always be something, too, where, like, when something has left your life, and then you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't realize how valuable that thing was, that person was, that job was. Um, so there's something really wanting to kind of plant you in more of a present position uh, where you can appreciate what you have in this moment now. And, you know, there's, there's so much. You're in a really big healing, healing, healing work space right now. And um, there's so much of it that is relating to... Um, um, two things that are more, uh, and this has been going on, this is because Saturn's in the fourth house with you, but, um, it's really tied in with this one here, but because there's been so much, um, so much things from childhood or from your home environment or things that you picked up on, uh, that kind of keep, kept you separated from where you really want to be with things now. So there's lots of shifts that are going on, lots of healing. There's lots of things that you're uncovering, um, probably through other people, probably through mirror action. There's definitely the flavor of this one that it is like mirroring. It's through the other. Um, um, it can even be, I'm almost feeling too like there's something money related that has created a friction that has um, had you feeling not um, comfortable with somebody or comfortable with something or or something that's kind of like that. So um, with this one, there's so much. Yours is the one I had the hardest time. That's why I'm doing yours last. I kept looking at this chart, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, I had that with somebody else this time, too. I think it was Gemini or Cancer. I can't remember. Gemini. But so um, this is, there, there's something about this tied in with your gifts, too. So maybe you've even been, like, doubting your gifts. Um, something with the healing process may have you looking back and being like, I don't even know what's real anymore. I don't know what I can count on. You know, like, life is a little harder like that in a way where we can't just pass go and just sail through things. It's like we have to deal with things. We have to face things. We have to make amends. Um, this can be some kind of making amends thing, too, because there's so much the other in it. Um, the, the relief point of this is that you can have a much easier time if you actually do spend more time in solitude and uh, in, um, you know, communicating in other ways, you know, like with automatic writing, with just kind of asking for what you need to see that you're not seeing. Um, there's a tie-in with connecting with spirit that is going to actually be the gateway that you go through to move into this better space. But you have to move through this gateway that is only accessed through meditation, quiet time, introspection, um, writing. I'm getting writing too, like where you can just really, excuse me, write this stuff out and, um, and, um, and, and discover like what isn't working in your life. And really like you're going to, what's cool is though meditation and quiet time and connecting with spirit and doing anything metaphysical is going to be, you're going to be more gung ho about it now where you're really going to be like, oh my gosh, I need to do this. Like you're going to realize that that is the key. And the thing is, too, is you are going to be kind of watched over. So you do have, like, these protective forces around you who are saying, just get quiet, just be still. We'll tell you what you need to know if you just do this. You know, and I always tell people, people have, I keep hearing a lot of people have a really easy time in the shower, which I wish I could do it that way, but we have such little well water <laughs> here in northern New Mexico. So I don't get to take those really long showers like I used to in the old days. Um, um, even baths, it's like, what's really funny too is, I don't want my landlord to see this, but um, our well went dry, and the night before our well went dry, because it's monsoon season, so I didn't even have any, we didn't have any thought that it could go dry, the river's been running, but something about with this being clay, it just wasn't sinking in, and the springs underground are tapped, so... But anyway, the night before, I took, like, one of the first baths all year because we're always, it sucks. We're always having to be, like, so conservative with water. And I'm 
a water being. I'm a Pisces in the desert, you know, so it's like, ah, ah, I'm a mermaid stuck on this dry, dry, dry climate, and I'm not allowed to take my baths that I would love to take every day. So, it was funny that I finally took a bath. I was like, fuck it, I'm taking a bath, I need to soak, I need to get some salt, I need to get da-da-da, and then the next morning he calls me and tells me the well's dry, I'm like, oh, fuck. So that gives me my one bath, but um, it was just kind of funny. I was like, man. So, um, being in water, um, I always, my best space for it is driving. Like, when I'm driving, I'm gone. Like, that's why people always, too, say, like, they can never get my attention when I'm driving. I've always been that way. Like, you can wave out of control. I'm like, I mean, I see everything that needs to be seen. I can keep my safety factor going on, but I'm gone. I'm like, doo -doo. But so, um, so that can be a really great way. Uh, also, because like you know, you're really ready to push through like what you're here to do. Like you're really ready to push through this new you that's seen in a different way. This is also because we're in the age of Aquarius now, and you're in the opposite sign. So you're in the ego. Uh, I need to be seen. I need to be special. I need to be just me. You know. And, um, but you're in this space where you're having to become more of we and not need that confirmation, not needing praise, not needing people to tell you how awesome you are, how beautiful you are, how wonderful you are. So you're already trying to move into a space that is more like, you know, I love who I am. It's all good. So there's definitely energy pushing you to wanting to be seen for who you really are and not like this front that is so natural for you to, um, do. It's who you are. It's, you know, so you have to understand that you kind of have one of the most difficult jobs of the zodiac now. I mean, Scorpio is there too, another sign that's squaring Aquarius, but um, um, Leo mostly because it's about losing that ego because the ego does not work in the age of Aquarius. You know, the need to be like, I'm right, you're all wrong, I want to be best, I want to be center stage, I want to get the attention. So you're learning to just kind of like not need it so much. And something with, uh, you know, going into meditative spaces um, and also with just kind of uncovering all these layers of past wounds um, with other people and probably with people that you really did care about. Um, they've accumulated so much because your ego ruled and need to be right and didn't take them into consideration. So you can pretty much full on expect that you are very much having like highlighted things with all the other people or all these other things that weren't dealt with in the most loving because you are so loving you know and I feel like you're awakening to like your love factor and like how you wished you would have done it different how you wished you would have treated this person different how you wished you would have dealt with that different and not had to have the ego of needing to be right and then that's that so there's lots of this you know and with this stuff down in the fourth house you know this is where it's there's so much healing that's going to be going on for a couple years, so you are going to be really gent need to be gentle with yourself because depression is going to be something that is, um, you know, even though it's so not in your normal way to be, or at least what you show the world, but um, there's going to be like just feelings of, you're not going to feel good until you do make amends, I can tell you that. You're not going to feel good until you really do like make the peace in whatever way you can. I mean, even like, you know, I just talked about this. I got this email from this girl who was like, you know, really like had, could not get over her anger for this relationship that was going towards total commitment of marriage and then didn't happen and all this stuff and how it just has really hurt her and she hasn't been able to let go of it and she finally just like moved into this space of like loving him and being wanting him to be happy and wanting him to be successful and stuff so even if it just takes you sending that out through the ethers you know maybe it's not even like you have to connect with that person but just really being like um, you know, bringing the forgiveness and the love and wishing the, them the best um, um, through a meditative space of your own. And, um, and that can be healing for you. So you basically won't even be able to move forward until you really do cut these cords and cut these, um, these entanglements um, where there was the element of ego that stopped them in their tracks and kept them from 
healing in a proper way or coming together because they can always come back together. The ego blocks things from coming back together. Um, but everyone would have had the potential to come back together had the ego not had to be up front and demand that it was right. And so there's going to be a lot with that. And um, <clears throat> through all this processing and shifting, your values are going to change. And this is where different things are going to be valuable to you now. And it's going to be much more higher vibrating. So you're going up in layers through this depth-related clearing that's having to take place. And it does, like I said, it goes back to childhood too. It's not something that you just manifested as you got older in life. It started then. You saw it then. The insecurities started then. Um, this need to always be right started then. Um, maybe, I don't know, a better sibling. I don't know if it was anything like that. Um, something feeling like you weren't good enough or so now you just have to be right and all that stuff. So it's going to take a lot of inner work, uh, but um, you can do it. And what's really cool too is this, this: this is going to birth a better and more connected spiritual, uh, our, our, our um, connection with your gifts. So your creative gifts could be even shifting because of this, and um, it can even be where it's like um, uh, you just kind of believe in yourself more. Like maybe you'll realize, gosh, because I had all that stuff lingering in my thoughts all the time, the regrets, the how do I get over this, the da 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 something about that keeping you anchored and not really even expressing your gifts uh, as, as amazingly as you should be. So that can be something too where all this stuff starts changing. I mean when our values change our lives change. So kind of face that all these other rippling effects are going to be happening. So I am cleansing my wounds with others. I am healing my wounds with others. I am making amends with others that I have hurt because of my ego and needing to be right. I don't need to be right. Um, it's okay to allow a, another person to be right. <laughs> um, or maybe that just needs to be taken out of the vocabulary, right and wrong. You know, maybe it's something like that where you can shift that. Um, I am opening more to my creative gifts. I am evolving into the person I really want to be. Um, I want to be free. I am free of all the binds. Um, of all the limitation from my past that is keeping me from being happy in the here and now. Okay? So you have a beautiful new moon, and I will see you in two weeks for the full moon in Pisces, where we're going to have even much more focus into this area. Uh, that's when we will have a really interactive um, episode of really letting things go. So things are coming to you now, they're coming to you now, they're coming to you now. In a couple weeks' time, you're really going to be, like, done. And you're going to spray water on that sand castle and start fresh again. All right? Okay, you have a beautiful new moon. I will see you in two weeks. Bye. <laughs> We're done, Mooney. You ready to go home?